If you'd like to turn to Luke chapter 24. Luke 24, this is the passage, of course, and where uh, the, the two on the road to Emmaus encounter the Lord Jesus. And we'll read from verse 31 to verse 35. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. This was at the breaking of bread. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed. He hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in the breaking of bread. We ask God to bless his word to us. I think I've spoken before on the need for the fire to burn. It's uh, a reality that is important for all of us. The two on the road to Emmaus then, they came to this glorious conclusion that the stranger that they had been walking with and talking with was indeed the Lord Jesus Christ. By the grace of Almighty God, they had been enabled to see that the one breaking bread with them was the, the Savior that they loved. And then they wasted absolutely no time in getting up and heading to Jerusalem because they were desperate to tell the other disciples what had happened. And we read there in that passage that they rose up that very same hour and they headed for Jerusalem. You can feel the excitement in their heart. They've seen Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified, is indeed risen. They're going to tell everyone else. And then when they, they get to tell everyone else that uh, Jesus had been with them on the way and they opened, he opened their eyes as he broke bread with them, they're hearing that the, the disciples realized, they knew that Jesus was alive and that he had appeared to Peter. A great excitement in the hearts of these two disciples. Energized by encountering the Savior and emboldened by their experience of the Lord Jesus. And it's a, a truth for all of us, for every single one of us in here and every single Christian. That our Savior is alive tonight. We know that Jesus is risen. Not just because the Bible tells us, but because we have experienced the risen Christ. We know that he's alive. Because he is alive, we are alive. Because he is risen, we will be raised. And we rejoice at this, of course. It's a, an amazing truth. Jesus, who was dead, but is now alive forevermore. It's a massive thing for us. Of course, knowing it is one thing. But we can become kind of familiar with these precious truths that the Scripture reveal. We can become a bit familiar with it. They become used to the knowledge. But you see, these two disciples, this was the fresh flush of realization that the Lord was alive and was walking with them. And they confessed to one another a precious confession. Verse 32. Did not our heart burn within us. Their hearts were burning within them. And that's what we long for. We long to fight to catch the fire tonight. We long to feel it. We long to feel our hearts burning. 
because the Savior is alive. We long to feel that within our, ourselves, and that's the title, Oh, for a Burning Heart. Did not our heart burn within us? That's another one of these expressions where you can almost hear the excitement in that word burn. Did not our hearts burn? Their hearts hadn't been burning before this, but they had spent a long time with Jesus. They'd witnessed his crucifixion. They knew he was buried. They're amazed that some women had said that Jesus was alive. That didn't cause their hearts to burn, though. Their hearts began to burn when they encountered the risen Savior. Wesley, John Wesley, famously described his conversion or the moment of his conversion by saying that his heart was strangely warmed. The fire flicker, real fire, not legalistic religious fire. That's what he had before. He was a legalist. Whitfield was a legalist. Trying to earn what can only be given by grace. Working themselves to the bone to gain approval from God. Whitfield almost killed himself, literally, because he was trying to hurt himself by not feeding properly, by not sleeping properly, because he thought that would please God. The more he suffered, the more he would please God. Martin Luther comes to mind, did exactly the same. That was a religious fire. We do not want religious fire in this church. Oh, so you but you see, the fire that now you. happened in the hearts of these two disciples yeah, was tonight, something yeah. else. Yeah. This yeah. supernatural inflaming yeah. of our hearts. We've all felt it. Every one of us in here has felt that fire. Every one of us has burned in that way. Not simply the beautiful sensation that you may remember at conversion or when you realized that you belonged to him and that he belonged to you. Not simply that, but throughout our lives there have been seasons when we felt the fire burning. We need our hearts to burn again. We've got a, a national church and other denominations that don't have the fire anymore. They've got rules and regulations, they've got rituals, they've got traditions. They might even have someone in the pulpit giving a message, but they don't have the fire. We need our hearts to burn. The church needs, our, needs to be filled with people whose hearts are burning. We want to do things right. We want to live holy lives, living the right way. We want to serve the Lord fully, holding nothing back from serving God in the ministry he's given us. We put everything into it. But we need to do these things with a burning heart. It's a burning heart for Christ that makes us able to do the right things and keep doing them.
to live the right way and keep living that way. To serve the Lord fully and to keep doing it. It's not duty, simply. It's a burning heart. And whatever we are involved in for God, it has to come out of that burn within us. That's revival, you see. Revival is God fanning the flame. Fanning the flame in the hearts of his church. Grace fanning the flame. Well, how does the Holy Spirit do that? Well, we're told two things in this passage. The way in which the burning heart came to these two disciples is the way that the burning heart comes and takes us. They said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us? By the way, this burning heart is fanned by communion. Communion with Christ. That's the first thing they say. Now not meaning at that moment when they sat with him at the table or when they sat with him and he broke bread with them. That's not what they're talking about here. I'm sure their heart did burn at that moment. But that's not what they say. Did our heart not burn within us while he talked with us? By the way. What caused their heart to burn like this was a personal communion with Christ. A personal communion with the Lord Jesus Christ. As he engaged with them and spoke to them and dealt with them personally as they walked on that road. That's what caused their heart to be in fire. The words of this person, the presence of this, because they didn't know yet. The presence and words of this person was doing something to them. That's what we need. Every believer. We need to be engaging with God every day. Walking with him every day. Hearing Jesus Christ speak to our hearts. That's what sets us on fire. That's what causes our hearts to burn. Jesus speaking. Jesus coming up close and speaking to us about what our lives are. You see, these two on the road were down because they thought that was it done. And their hearts were breaking. And these men needed to be revived. And so the risen Christ comes right up beside them and speaks to them. I don't know how you feel tonight, whether your heart's burning or whether it isn't. If it is, hallelujah. But if your heart isn't burning tonight, perhaps it's the area of communion, communication between you and God, you and Jesus, that needs to be considered. You know, Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, didn't he? That he'll come in and sup with us. That's the ordinary things. There's nothing special about eating and drinking. It's what we have to do. But the risen Savior says he will come in and be engaged in these things with us. He'll commune with us even in the little things of life. That thrills us. That, should, that alone should cause our hearts to burn. That, that my life, the details of my life that I'm focused on, Jesus said, I'm going to be with you in these things. I'm going to speak to you in these things. Ah, oh, but Lord, it's just ordinary stuff like...
It's doing the dishes. Brother Lawrence knew all about doing the dishes in the presence of God. Jesus says, I'll do these little things. The beautiful truth is that when we engage with Jesus like that, our hearts just start to flame. But when we stop engaging with Jesus, when we stop listening to what Jesus says to us personally now, to that same extent, the heart begins to grow colder and the flame isn't burning as brightly. But here's the thing. Isaiah 42, 3 tells us that he will not snuff out a smoldering flax. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, my heart is just flickering. Flickering so feebly, you might be saying. Well, it's not going to go out, brother or sister. If that fire has been lit by God, the devil cannot put it out. That's what Spurgeon said. If the flame has been lit by God, the devil cannot put it out. Jesus Christ will not allow the flame in a true disciple to flicker and die. He'll fan it into flame again by drawing close and engaging and speaking in the ordinary things of our lives. That's what the nation needs. The nation needs a church filled with people whose hearts are burning because they engage and encounter Jesus all the time. That we don't run from Jesus. We, we run to him. We walk with him when he comes to us. And the heart just... They need to see this. They need to see a church whose people have this flame within them so that the heat will reach them and that they'll catch fire, guy. They'll catch fire. Kenny text, put a text on the chat tonight, on the office bearers chat, to say that he was going to sit at the back to catch the fire, guy. And I texted him back saying, oh, I'm praying that we're all going to catch the fire, guy. We need to catch the fire and burn so that that fire then jumps from our hearts as Christ uses it by God's grace and sets fire in the hearts of other people. But they don't just say that. They say this. They said to one another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? That personal conversation that your heart is having with his. But then they say, and while he opened to us the scriptures. Not only is the, the flame fanned or the, the heart fanned into flame by personal encounter with a shepherd as he puts his hand on your shoulder and speaks to you, but when he teaches us the scriptures. It's not just this communion, it's also the teaching of the word of God. These two on the, the road to Emmaus were made aware of the incendiary nature of this word when Christ takes it and opens it up. When Jesus speaks, That's what we need all the time. When we come to the word of God in our private and personal study, it's, it's not about how much of the Bible we get through at a particular time or a particular moment. It's how much of the Bible gets through to us. When we're reading scripture, 
yeah, we want to read it, and, and we, we do. We, we diligently do these things, but we need Jesus Christ to take the Scripture and teach it to us. We need to be like those two disciples who, when Jesus spoke to them about the Word, that's what caused their hearts to burn. He says in Luke 4, 18, the quote in Isaiah, and we've looked at this before, that the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. He had been anointed to preach the gospel. That's what we need every time we open it. Every time we open the Bible, we need the anointed Savior, the anointed Almighty God, this, the anointed one to come right up close and say, look, this is what it means. Have you ever been, in, well you have, of course you have. You've been in that position where we, we read a scripture and we've read it for many years and, it's, and fair enough, it's the scriptures and we read and we go on. And then one day, suddenly, we read the same scripture and it grabs hold of our hearts and we can't go beyond it. Why? Because at that moment, Jesus is teaching you the scriptures. It's no longer just you reading it, but you're reading it guided by him, and he opens it up to us, and the heart just begins to burn, and you say, oh, that's what it means. I've never understood that. I've often wondered about that, and all of a sudden, Christ has opened it up to you. And it's never the same again. And you're never the same again. And for the rest of your life, that scripture is in your heart. For the rest of your days, you'll remember that. And you keep going back to the day when Jesus opened that up to you. And you keep telling other people about the day Jesus gave you that scripture. And it causes your heart to burn and you're spreading the fire because you're giving your excitement to other people. Isn't it marvelous when Jesus does that? And we're all sitting here tonight, so many, whoever, how many of, of us there are, and throughout our lives, we've got a collection of these moments when, when it hasn't just been reading the Bible. It's been Jesus speaking the Bible into our hearts and causing us to burn. And the marks of that flame, the, 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 the remembrance of how beautiful that was sticks with us. Oh, that we get that regularly, that we're feeling this burn because regularly in reading the Bible, we hear the voice of Christ because that fans the flame. But it's not only in the reading of the Bible, but it's sitting under the preaching of the Word of God. That's why in, in our churches what we need are, are those who have been hearing from Jesus themselves so that when they bring the word of God, it's not them speaking, it's Jesus Christ who's speaking through the vessel to all of us. That's what we need. Well, we know all about that as a, a fellowship. You do. The pastor, he was an anointed man of God. He didn't just give his opinion. He shared what Jesus had said to him. That's beautiful. That's, that's the kind of ministry we need in every church. We need that kind of power to be released so that the, the word of Christ, the word of Christ coming through the preacher dwells in us richly. That's what we long for. And that means three things. It means there are three things laid upon us. And I'm just going to say what they are. And we can think about them personally. 
It means that we, if, if the flame is fanned by instruction in the word, then the first thing is that we need to realize the divine pressure in our hearts to be in the word personally and to be studying the Bible. We need to feel that, or that we feel that pressure from God to be in the Bible personally and prayerfully. And that we need to have a desire to be under anointed preaching because that is when Christ ministers to the congregation or oh, that we would experience these things and desire these things but it also means that the preacher this is the third thing the third burden it means that the preacher needs to be someone who spends time talking with Jesus on a personal basis Whoever it is, I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about whoever is preaching. He has to be a man who is in conversation with Jesus Christ so that he can bring that to the people of Jesus. When a believer communes with Christ and is instructed in the scriptures by Christ, they find that their hearts burn for Christ. That's revival. Lord, do that work here in Zion Baptist Church. Speak with us, Lord. Speak with us. Instruct us. Make our hearts burn for you. Oh, for a burning heart. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a precious, gentle Father. We often sing that you're a, a good, good Father. And we thank you, Father, that in your goodness, you so deal with your children. that you cause us to feel it. We are so thankful tonight, Father, that we can feel it when Jesus deals with us. We can feel the joy, the overwhelming sense of your presence when you commune, when you draw close, Lord, and when you speak to the, the deep parts of our hearts, When you just address our fears, our concerns. When you speak kindly. When you speak words of comfort. In, the, in a personal communion. In that supernatural connection that we have with you, Lord. But oh, how we're all so thankful tonight, Father for your goodness in giving us a saviour who lives and longs to draw close and teach the Bible to us. May that be our experience in the days and weeks and months and years ahead. Oh, for a burning heart. Because, Father, we look out of this church and we look into the nation. And the nation's cold there's no spiritual flame at all. Oh, may we be so burning inside that when we speak, when we witness, they catch the fire. That they catch on fire by a work of your grace. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters in here tonight. And I ask that 
just as I ask for myself, that you would speak with us tonight, that you would teach us tonight, you would fan the flame tonight. Bless those who aren't here, who would normally be here. May they feel the fire where they are. May their hearts be burning, Father God, this night. For we ask it in Jesus, for your glory. Amen.